have a first name and a last name. But you want it to look like this. Now normally you would, you would pay some intern $10 an hour to go through and combine these two fields together by manually typing everything out. Instead what we're going to do is we're going to use a feature in Excel that has the ampersand. So I'm going to push equal to start a formula, choose Nathan in cell A2, push ampersand, and then select Garrett in B2. Once I do that, you see it takes my two cells and combines them into one. So if I change this information from Garrett to Smith, it goes ahead and updates this automatically as well. Now you see there is one problem here. It, it smushes all the data together. So it has Nathan and then no space and then Smith. We could fix this by adding a space before Smith, but that's not really ideal because we don't want to have to manipulate our original data. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to tell Excel how to put text in here. Now, normally when you type words in, like say you do average, Excel thinks you're doing a formula. However, what we want to do is just be able to type in a bit of text and have Excel not try to interpret that as a formula. So what we do is we put quotes around it. If I write the word average around quotes, Excel knows I'm not trying to do a function. Instead, I'm actually just want the word average there. So what we can do here is we're now we'll choose Smith ampersand, and I'm going to put a quote, a comma, a space, and another quote. And what it's going to do is it's going to take this Smith, put a comma after Smith, a space, and then I'm going to have a2 for my first name. And now you see that I have a nicely formatted column here. And as I add more information, all I got to do is copy that formula from C2 down to C3, and now it works. If I decide I want my name the other way around, I just do equals A2 and inside of quotes, a space, and B2. And now I have, in real quick fashion, my name's put the opposite direction. Now you can use this feature in a lot of different ways. But one example is you can use it to create sort of a primitive little mail merge. Let me show you an example. Let's say I've got a bunch of information and I want to send out individual emails to the, each person with their score. I'm going to write inside of quotes, hello and a space. Then I'm going to write A2. When I push enter, you'll see it says, now says, hello Nate. Let's put a little bit more in here. Another ampersand in quotes. I'll put a semicolon and then the first line is, your score is another space and another ending quote. Now I have, hello Nate, your score is. So the last thing I would need to do is put cell C2 here at the end, so and C2, and now it has, hello Nate, your score is 87. Then this, you can then just copy and stick into your email program, and you don't have to fill in each individual cell. Now once you get to a fairly long email, you'll find this kind of gets a little bit cumbersome because as you see up here, it's hard to kind of read all the little pieces and see where everything starts and stops. So what we can do is actually use the named cell feature in Excel to make this easier. So I have, how are you doing this nice Monday? Your score is, this is your last chance to resubmit, and thanks Dr. Garrett. And you notice I've actually named each one of these cells. So say I want to have one more opening thing. I'm going to have my opening as dear and a space. Instead of saying cell A1, I want to have this as opening. You just type here, push enter, and now that cell is named opening, and I can refer to it in a formula. So I say equals opening, and I pull whatever is in this cell into this formula. If I change that to dear or to hello, now I have the word hello showing down here. So I'm going to use the names opening, letter one, letter two, and signature. So in here, let me delete what I have. I'm going to do equals opening, which is hello, and a2 and letter one, you notice that, hello Nate, how are you this nice Monday? And my score, C2, and letter two, and signature. And you'll notice now I have my complete email all written out, hello Nate, how are you this nice Monday? Your score is 87, this is your last chance to resubmit. Thanks, Dr. Garrett. Now the last thing you may wanna do with this is you'll notice that I don't have any line breaks. Right, everything's one really big long line. And to do a nice email, you need to have some enters in there. The way around this is to use a function in Excel called char, or character, C-H-A-R. The character code 10 
is what's called the line break character. Basically, it's like an enter. So what we do here is we have char 10, and what I want to do is I'm actually going to stick this in a cell by itself over here. I'm going to call this cell NL for, for new line, and I'm going to have it equals to char 10. And this is because I find it easier to remember NL instead of car 10 each time. So now I go back to my formula, and I look at this, and I say, okay, I want to have the opening, and I want to have a new line, but I don't want to have, I'm sorry, actually, I want to do A2 and new line, and letter 1 and C2 and new line, and letter 2 and new line and signature. All right, so I know it looks a little bit tight in here, but you see I've got the name of the cell, a reference, my enter, the name of the cell, a reference, another new line, the last little bit of my letter, a new line, and finally my signature at the end. Now it doesn't look that much different here, but when I copy and paste it into my mail program, I'll see a difference. Okay, so I pulled up my compose new message, I go in here and I paste now the thing that I just wrote. And now you see I have all the new line characters that are nicely making a new character pop over. Let's say I want to have an empty line between each one. All I have to do is I go back to my original NL cell. Instead of one character 10, I'll have two character 10s. Here, now even though you can't see it, there's an extra symbol in there now. Now I go back to here, I copy it, I go back to my compose email, paste, and now I have an extra empty line. And so now I have my formula all set up properly, and I can come through, copy it down, and now I just copy and paste each one of these one at a time. Bob, Sarah, Sergio, Donna, and Tom, and paste them into whatever system I have that I'm using. Now you can do the same kind of thing in using a mail merge with Word, but keeping it all in Excel just makes it a little bit cleaner and easier, and just the overall approach of using this sort of named cell and little and concatenate symbol makes it pretty easy to maintain and modify in the future.